So we'll pray our Stonecroft Mass uh, for your personal intentions and for uh, the deceased intention will be for the person that uh, you've lost most recently in your life or in your family. We'll pray for their eternal repose, okay? Behold, the Lord will come, descending with splendor to visit his people with peace, and he will bestow on them eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. As we pray this Mass, we recall the times that God's great love has first made itself manifest. We thank him for all the times that he has healed, healed us from our illnesses and given us the strength of this Eucharist to continue to love our family members, to pray for them, to do penance for their sins, that they, we might come with a great tribe of people into the glory of God's kingdom. Let's call to mind then who will work this spiritual communion for at this Mass, those members of our family that we hold so dear to our hearts, that they would be given these same graces in the Eucharist that we receive. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Grant that your people, we pray, Almighty God, may be ever watchful for the coming of your only begotten Son, that as the author of our salvation himself has taught us, we may hasten, alert, and with lighted lamps to meet him when he comes, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I, the Lord your God, teach you what is for your good, and I lead you on the way that you should go. If you would hearken to my commandments, your prosperity would be like a river, and your vindication like the waves of the sea. Your descendants would be like the sand, and those born of your stock like its grains. Their name never cut off or blotted out from my presence. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Bless the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like the chaff, which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. 
The Lord will come. Go out to meet him. He is the Prince of Peace. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the crowds, To what shall I compare this generation? It is like children who sit in marketplaces and call to one another. We played the flute for you, but you did not dance. We sang a dirge, but you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they said of him, He's possessed by a demon. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they said, Look, he is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is vindicated by her works. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. So they say that uh, you could never make a Catholic priest happy. You know, no matter what you do, he's not going to be happy. Uh, priest gets mad when his parishioners don't respond to the mass parts. Uh, if they do respond, he gets mad if they don't do it loud enough. Uh, priest gets mad if you don't volunteer to do work around your church. And then when you do volunteer to do work around your church, the priest tells you, no, you can't do that because you're already doing a ministry. I want somebody that's not doing any ministry to do that work. So don't volunteer for that. You've already got some work for yourself. You just can't please a priest, you know? You know, I don't, I don't like uh, when I have to fast on Friday. And now we have to fast for Nancy Pelosi's sins against life and Dick Durbin's sins against life. I want to do penance for my own sins, and I have to do penance for these people. Now the U.S. bishops in Illinois are telling us that uh, with Roe versus Wade overturned, now we're supposed to fast on Fridays for the Illinois State Legislature that they'll have good common sense to enact good laws in Illinois that will help us to uh, have a pro-life culture. Well, I don't want to be doing penance for the legislature in Illinois when I should be doing penance for my sins and my parishioners' sins. And then on feast days, when God gives us a feast day to celebrate, uh, you know, I don't have any good food at the rectory, any special food to eat on the feast day. Why? because I wound up eating it on ordinary time days. I should have saved it for the feast days, but I ate it already. So if feast day comes around, I don't have nothing to feast with. You know, you just can't please a priest. He's never, he's never content. And that's what Jesus is saying in our gospel. You know, uh, when I played the flute and I played happy music for you, you refused to dance. When I saw, sang a, a funeral march for you, you wouldn't mourn. You know, we're never happy with what God is trying to give us, but not you. If you're sick and you're anointed today, you don't blame God because you're sick. You just say, thank you for bringing me the healing graces of the sacrament. And if you have your health, you're thankful. God, thank you for giving me my good health. Help me to receive the Eucharist and to do good things while I still have strength. Say my prayers for other people so that other people can get to heaven. That's you. You want to please Jesus when he gives you good things, and you even please Jesus if he inflicts on you illness or bad things. You say, praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. That's you. Don't be like your priest. Never happy one way or another. You're happy both ways and the other. Okay, so this uh, oil has already been blessed by the bishop. It was blessed at a chrism mass on a Holy Thursday. And so I'll just come around and I'll, I'll dip the cotton ball into the uh, holy oil. And uh, I'll just put a little bit of the oil on your forehead and on the palms of your hand, okay? And I'll say the prayer that accompanies the, uh, the sacrament there.
this holy anointing, may the Lord of his love and mercy help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. And may the Lord who frees you from sin save you and raise you up. Love and mercy help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. And may the Lord who frees you from sin save you and raise you up. Amen. Through this holy anointing, may the Lord's love and mercy help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. And may the Lord who frees you from sin save you and raise you up. sin, save you, and raise you up. Amen. Through this holy anointing, may the Lord in his love and mercy help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord frees you from sin, save you, and raise you up. Holy anointing. May the Lord in his love and mercy help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who frees you from sin save you and raise you up. Amen. Through this holy anointing, may the Lord in his love and mercy help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who frees you from sin save you and raise you up. This holy anointing, may the Lord in his love and mercy help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who frees you from sin save you and raise you up. To this holy anointing, may the Lord in his love and mercy help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who frees you from sin save you and raise you up. And I forgot. So the people are supposed to uh, be praying for you, so I have to show them who you are. So I'll just do a little pan here so they can see who you are to remember, keep you in their, in their prayers. So at all the masses during the week, uh, the people, they pray uh, the rosary before the mass. And we're always praying for the sick and those that are uh, members of our community that couldn't celebrate the mass with us. And so this will give them a reminder of who to be praying for, OK? And now we'll do the prayer petitions for the Mass. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the gifts that you have given us, especially the gift of our good health. And for those of us who are sick, may these holy anointing oils bring us back to good health. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you're so kind and generous with us that when we ask for you to make a spiritual communion for our beloved that can't attend this Mass with us, you give them the graces that we so want them to have. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we always pray for our beloved dead. We now pray for that special person from our family that we've lost most recently to death. We pray that our prayers and the masses we celebrate for them would speed their entrance into glory. We pray eternal rest granted to them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Amen. May their souls and all the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. And we'll pray for that uh, special... 
uh, baby that we spiritually adopted, the one that's in danger of abortion, we'll pray the Bishop uh, St. Fulton Sheen prayer. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, I love you very much. I beg you to spare the life of James, the unborn baby that I have spiritually adopted who is in danger of abortion. Amen. And we pray a Hail Mary prayer, especially for all the members of the Illinois State Legislature, for all those who are still uh, help the culture of death. We pray for a change of conversion of heart, that our prayers and the, the grace of the Holy Spirit would help them to become more pro-life, to protect every human life from its conception to its natural death. And so we call out to Our Lady, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and to answer all of these prayers, and the prayers that remain in the secret of our hearts. We ask you to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits of our, our own to plead our cause, come in our rescue with the protection of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word, you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as a mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women whom you have made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of his spirit. And therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when it's once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. And therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. 
broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of his love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your spirit, and grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son, and confirm us in the bond of unity and communion, together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. And grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and their pain their joy and their hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have passed away. They have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. And we pray for all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Peter and St. Juan Diego, and with all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. And graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, when the worthy should enter under my roof, I only say the word, my soul shall be saved. We await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our mortal bodies to conform with his glorified body. Now we'll make our spiritual communion prayer for those that couldn't be with us today, but we still want them to receive the same graces of, of Holy Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since other people dear to me cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come at least spiritually into their hearts. As though you are already in our hearts, help us to embrace you and unite ourselves wholly to you. Permit not that we should ever be separated from you. Amen.
And I will pray a prayer of gratitude. My Jesus, I love and adore you. You have come to me. I am one with you. I want you to remain with me forever, in this life and in the next. Thank you for allowing me to share your divine life. May I become more like you through this sacred food. And let me never take you for granted, but always pray for those whose lives are dark with sin and ignorance and selfishness. And let me remember in the words of St. Paul that there but for the grace of God go I. Each day I can become more like you, O Lord, and each day I can pray for those who have never heard of your presence in the Eucharist or who have heard it and rejected it. <clears throat> and let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we have our... Uh, our Advent retreat coming up at our three parishes. So next uh, Wednesday through Saturday, uh, we're going to have uh, uh, four, four days of the talks. And our talks are, are entitled Anticipating the Quadruple Coming of Christ. So we're having a four-day retreat. And each one of those days will correspond to one of the comings of Christ. So we're going to learn how to prepare for the coming of Christ at Christmas, uh, the coming of Christ at the end of our life, the coming of Christ uh, when he, at the general judgment, and then the coming of Christ in the Holy Mass. And so we're going to have, as a special part of that uh, retreat, uh, we're going to have the 40 hours devotion. So each, uh, each day for four days, we'll be at our churches and expose our Lord in the monstrance. So we need your prayers to uh, help us to uh, adore our Lord. Even though you might not be able to come and experience the retreat or to make a holy hour in front of our Lord, uh, you can still pray with us and adore our Lord from right here at Stonecroft. And so I'll give you a little holy card so you can see the the times that we'll have our Lord exposed in the 40 hours, and you can be praying along with us just from the comfort of your own uh, room here at Stonecroft, okay? But as for your prayers for our parishioners as we try to make a good Advent season in anticipation of Christmas. Okay. The Lord be with you. Amen. Now bow your heads and pray for God's Lenten or Advent blessing. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and you yearn for him to come again. Sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, enrich you and the people you love with this blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may God make you firm in your Catholic faith, joyful in the hope that you one day become a saint and active in all your works of charity. Amen. And so that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, 